Very rarely does one battle mech capture the imagination of the wider audience that enjoys the Battletech setting. Often, those that do can seem very obscure or without value, such as the urban mech, or they are imposing towers of steel and destruction, like the Atlas. But there is really little rhyme or reason for it. Sometimes, just a cool appearance and some powerful guns is enough. If the mech is displayed in the right place, at the right time, people will gravitate towards it. The mech in this video originally appeared in Mech Commander 2, before arriving in other video games such as Mech Assault. This titanic, mostly clan homeworld-centric design is a product of Clan Star Adder, the true and current masters of the clan homeworlds in Kerensky Cluster. This video will cover the Blood Asp. An assault mech weighing in at 90 tons, the Blood Asp is a terrifying clan assault mech, but not one which appeared particularly often in the Inner Sphere, at least for most of the 31st century. In fact, while most battle mechs in the setting are venerable, appearing centuries before the major conflicts of the Third and Fourth Succession Wars, as well as the clan invasion. The Blood Asp is the product of a new age, first appearing in 3060. Originally designed by Clan Star Adder, one of the mightiest clans to not be involved in the invasion of the Inner Sphere, this battle mech has its origins in another clan assault, namely the Clan Kingfisher, at least on an engineering level. It would be an upgrade over the original in a multitude of ways, not just in terms of its new appearance, but in terms of the technological investments made into it. On an emotional level, however, it has its origins in Clan Star Adder's near complete hatred of Clan Blood Spirit, their primary rival in the Kerensky Cluster. In fact, the name the Blood Asp was directly meant to be an insult towards their rivals. This obscure Goliath would rarely be seen in the Inner Sphere as mentioned prior, perhaps only through a rare mech, captured by trial from an invading clan from Star Adder itself. On another note, however, there is an odd exception to that, which is that a number of these would appear in the Federated Commonwealth Civil War, in two particular conflict zones in the Chaos Marches. Their origins as to how they got there are still unknown but they would earn the title simply being called the Star Adder, which appears to still be listed as a valid name for the mech, as of Recognition Guide 32, at least from the Inner Sphere. The term seems to have come from spheroids referring to the machine as the Star Adder mech, and then just shortening it down over time. All of these mechs were destroyed by the end of the Fedcom Civil War, however. It was prized exceptionally by anyone who could wield it on the homeworlds themselves though, and has a reputation for extreme levels of firepower. It would be the fangs of Clan Star Adder, which they would use during the Wars of Reaving to stab their foes one by one, before asserting their dominance over the ruins that were left behind from Clan Steel Viper's foolish decision to begin the reaving of blood names and bloodlines from the clans. For many, this mech seemed lost. It was outside of the grasp of anyone of note. A few of these incredibly rare war machines might have been found in hidden inventories of the Hell's Horses, leaving with them on their flight from the homeworlds. But even then, that would be a stretch. Its imposing, intimidating form was lost to the Inner Sphere. Perhaps that was for the best, though, as this stunning monster of a battle mech can really only bring disunity destruction, and death to anywhere its gigantic feet tread. But quietly, the seeds of arrival from this blood snake would make their way into the periphery realm, once known as the Outworld's Alliance. Clan Snow Raven would be amongst the clans that would be forced from their homes as a result of the Wars of Reaving. The Ravens had already found their way into the Inner Sphere before, allying loosely with the Outworld's Alliance and doing battle against Inner Sphere powers. This would ironically be their doom, 
As Ilkhan Brett Andrews used it as a justification to persecute the now tainted Snow Ravens in their home territories. This concluded in the destruction and loss of their homeworld holdings, as well as the doom of many of their jump vessels. Those that survived would find themselves in the Inner Sphere without a true home, barring their way stations within the Outworld's Alliance. They would eventually come to unify with their periphery friends, however, which would then form into the Raven Alliance, occupying much of the space of what had been the Outworld Alliance. This would give the Snow Ravens a new industrial base in the Inner Sphere, and they would begin putting that to use, especially as they implemented clan technologies into these spaces. With those who managed to escape their original homes, they had brought the stolen plans for one of the most feared and deadly mechs from the clan homeworlds, the Mighty Blood Asp. It arrived aboard the vessels of the escapees. While beneficial to the clan and their new territories, this would have consequences for the rest of humanity. This forgotten machine, briefly only seen creating carnage on the home worlds for only a few decades before all contact with the Kerensky Cluster ended, would now have a den to lurk within, before being unleashed upon the inner sphere in what appears to be a reckless way. During the Dark Age, the Snow Ravens themselves would begin the process of manufacturing these assault mechs, and deploying them to their own growing ground forces. But this would change with the arrival of the Ill Clan era. Clan Seafox was an old rival to the Snow Ravens, and there was a conscious decision made by the Ravens to disrupt some of their counterparts' dominance in Clan tech sales across the Inner Sphere. They would begin making the Blood Asp available for export across the Sphere, to Clanners and Spheroids alike. This exceptional machine appears poised to become a true winner in the marketplace, being acquired by various mercenary forces, the Duchy of Endurian, the Magistry of Canopus, the Rosselhague Dominion, the Wolf Empire, the Federated Sons, who appeared to be the ones who gifted it with the Star Adder moniker during the Fedcom Civil War, Clan Jade Falcon, the Capellan Confederation, and Clan Hell's Horses. That's right, all of those nations and private contractors can now field this mighty war machine. This once forgotten or lost battle mech, now thanks to Clan Snow Raven, has been unleashed upon the Inner Sphere once more if for no other reason than to satisfy their own greed, and their willingness to deprive Clan Seafox of market share if possible, potentially bringing the two into a commercial conflict. Millions or more may suffer as a result of this. Worse still, it likely never crossed the Snow Ravens' minds anyway, because these tame snakes are just too good for business. This relentless 90-ton clan Omnimech, now making its horrifying appearance in the Inner Sphere, would first be manufactured by Clan Star Adder in 3060. It benefits greatly from a multitude of clan technologies in its manufacturing process, which give it more free weight and critical space as compared to its Inner Sphere counterparts, at least which were designed around the same time as its release, though with time this technology gap appears to be closing as of the Dark Age. Still, it runs a standard gyro and cockpit for its time, but it does install Clan Endo Steel, reducing its internal structure from 9 tons down to 4.5 tons, just at the expense of some internal critical space in the mech. For its communications, it has a Series D8CC-25X system, which while being a Clan quality communications array is fantastic, it offers no additional abilities to the mech. For its other major onboard electronic systems, it has for its targeting and tracking a Hermes CT42 Mark II, which again, while advanced, doesn't confer it any benefits. While it seems as though the Blood Asp may be without any quirks, this is thankfully not the case. Its chassis is so well constructed and utilitarian, as well as just being built for durability and usability, that it has the rugged trait meaning in campaign, it requires less maintenance to continue to operate over time. This makes it an even greater addition to the Inner Sphere, where long, 
grueling deployments are seemingly more common. It's a match made in hell, really. Like most clan Omnimechs built for frontline service, the Blood Asp invests heavily into an advanced, powerful, and expensive clan tech power plant. This means that it has an enormous and powerful 16.5 ton consolidated fusion 360XL engine installed on board, which gives it a maximum speed of a respectable 65 kilometers per hour, or six movement points in the tabletop game. Being a clan tech engine as well, this means that the power plant only takes up two critical spaces per side, rather than the inner spheres three making it less susceptible to engine critical hits, and meaning that if it loses a side torso, it may not be immediately destroyed. For a 90-ton Viper of a battle mech, this is an exceptional amount of speed too, given that it actually can't go any faster without the assistance of a supercharger or mask. It will outpace most comparable inner sphere assault mechs and keep up with its clan peers. For the volume of firepower that it has on board as well, it might even outpace some of those in the same deadly weight bracket, even. The Blood Asp, in order to stay cool, has clan double heat sinks on board, with four additional tons installed into the engine. This means that it can reduce its heat load by 28 every single turn, without taking up any critical space inside of the mech's body. This is very important, as clan Omnimechs not only generate a lot of heat, they also tend to be hungry for critical space. Additionally, if alternative configurations demand it, additional modular heat sinks can be installed into the mech, allowing it to run cooler regardless. In other words, it can run as cool as it needs to, so long as the configurations are arranged smartly and in a way that benefits the Blood Asp. Often compromises need to be made on battle mechs which are heavily gunned, or run exceptionally cool, or even move at very fast or moderate speeds. But those mechs are typically inner sphere mechs. The Blood Asp doesn't use advanced technologies in its base chassis protection, like Clan Ferro Fibrous or a permanently installed ECM of some sort. It just doesn't need to. Instead, the Blood Asp goes for a simple, tried and tested approach by battle mechs which have limited critical space available, at least for their planned weapons, but have excess tonnage on their hands. It installs 16 tons of forging ZZ7 ceramic plating, or in other words, standard armored plating. This gives it a more than respectable total of 256 points of armor, allowing it to slug it out with other assault mechs as it needs to, and keeping it alive on the field of battle in most eras. With a Clan XL engine and Clan Endo Steel on board, even with reasonable investments made in armor and heat sinks, there was always going to be a big opening left over for pod space on this hulking monstrosity. And if you assumed as much up until this point, you would be correct. With the saved weight on this engine and structure, the Blood Asp has a nightmarish 42 tons of open space on board. It also has a total of 33 open critical slots as well, which it can use to fill out this tonnage. Meaning that there is an enormous amount of potential deadly weapons combinations that can be fitted together per configuration. This platform is a devastating presence on the battlefield as a result. One should not underestimate the Blood Asp under any circumstances. When this snake coils to attack, it will have the firepower to back it up. It is never a bluff. The most notable of all configurations of any Omnimech is always the Prime model. This will typically be the most frequent one sighted, and it will be the one which players look at most often when viewing a mech. The Prime of the Blood Asp, it should be noted, is an exceptionally dangerous platform. Often looking for symmetry between its two sides, this mech invests heavily into its shoulder-based cannons and arm-mounted weapons. To begin with, for its main offensive systems, it has a pair of Clantec Gauss rifles, with one mounted in each side torso. This gives it superb range, optimal damage, and the ability to potentially execute an enemy mech in a single hit, through a lucky Gauss rifle round connecting with the enemy mech's head. These systems are rightly respected and feared in every era from their introduction forward. There is one shortcoming, however, which is that the Blood Asp only has two tons of ammunition in total for these guns. This means that if the fight drags on, these cannons may go silent. 
But even if they do, the Prime is bristling with other weapons to finish the job. Make no mistake. In fact, the Gauss Rifles will allow it to angle for its true optimal range, staving off enemies at long range while it closes in. As an aside, before we touch on close range systems, it installs an additional four clan double heat sinks on board in order to give it a heat ceiling of 36, which is necessary given the number of energy weapons which follow after its rifles. First, it has four heavy medium lasers with two mounted in each arm. These do brutal damage in close, hitting as hard as an inner sphere PPC. While their accuracy isn't necessarily great, nor is their range, it's all about the damage. To back these up, it installs twin medium pulse lasers, which again are found in each arm, allowing for it to alternate with longer and more accurate fire as needed as well. Finally, to cap off this deadly arsenal, it has a Clan Streak SRM-6 launcher in the center torso, with one ton of ammunition. Overall, the Blood Asp is extraordinarily dangerous. It will tear through targets with its Gauss Rifles, before melting them with waves of deadly lasers in close, hitting for almost 50 damage when all of its beams connect, before showering a target in missiles, trying to seek out critical hits on its maimed foes. It starts the battle at a distance, before closing in and becoming an all-devouring laser beast and people wonder where it started getting its vicious reputation from. The A configuration is a bit more of a stereotypical clan assault mech, insofar that it leans almost entirely into energy systems, not even bothering with something like Gauss rifles. First, to enhance the light show of doom, it has a targeting computer on board, because of course it does. Then it has a clan ECM suite as well, giving it an extra layer of protection. For mobility, it even adds jump jets to the A, which is fascinating as it does help its mobility, especially in difficult to navigate environments. Finally, before we get to its vicious beam weapons, let's talk about cooling, because it's going to need it. It adds a total of eight additional modular double heat sinks, bringing its total cooling to a shocking 44. Because trust me, as I said, it's going to need every point of that cooling. First, as is seemingly tradition, for long range fire and deadly head capping ability, the A mounts a Clan ER PPC in each of its arms. These will punch holes in targets just as well as any Gauss rifle, just for 15 times the heat, which is why it needed those extra heat sinks. Then, as if that weren't enough, it goes on to mount twin heavy large lasers, which helps explain why it has a targeting computer. It can comfortably fire each set of its main weapon systems, or some arrangement of them. But alpha striking is something that should be done out of desperation only. Because if the A configuration alpha strikes, it will generate 66 points of heat in a single round of fire, if it doesn't move. But it will do 62 points of damage, with every weapon potentially vaporizing the cockpit of an enemy mech warrior. This thing requires management to be effective. But when managed appropriately, it will be the doom for a multitude of pilots that face it down. One would be a fool to underestimate it. The B configuration is a wild departure from the Prime or A, in that its main weapons are focused more on long-range support or even indirect fire, which is something the clans seem to discourage usually. In fact, it almost has more in common seemingly with a Stalker than it does with most clan mechs. Once again, it has an ECM suite on board to help it in the realm of electronic warfare. And it installs two additional double heat sinks to help it manage its potential heat load. But the Blood Asp, after this, invests wisely in a pair of arm-mounted, more specifically with one in each arm, LRM-20 launchers with Artemis IV fire control systems, giving it a huge range, as well as allowing it to hit targets outside of its direct line of fire, should they be scouted by friendly mechs. It has 12 rounds of fire per launcher as well, which is more than respectable. To back up these crit-seeking, sandblasting missile batteries, it once again invests into a Gauss rifle, this time mounting it in the right torso and giving it 3 tons of ammunition. The cannon will fire turn on turn without a second thought, each time punching holes for those missiles to fill. If things come to close range, where it appears to be perhaps a bit more vulnerable, well, you've been deceived. 
this is a clan assault mech, and that's not how that works. Because if something does close with it, they will quickly find that they are engaged with the bee's four clan medium pulse lasers, which are mounted in the left torso. These are very accurate and hit reasonably hard, especially when combined with its LRM systems, which have no minimum range. The Blood Ass Bee is a support mech monster that can hold its own in close and should never be misjudged as being weak at anything. What if there was a Blood Ass built for brawling and built to slaughter vehicles and infantry in the worst ways imaginable? Thanks to the strenuous work of Clan Snow Raven, such a configuration was conceived for the Ill Clan era much to the horror of the soon-to-be-dead and their widows. Starting with equipment, the T installs a supercharger into the mech's center torso, which allows it to accelerate to higher speeds, giving it the opportunity to climb to a terrifying 8 movement points a turn, or 86 kilometers per hour for every turn it is activated, so long as it doesn't fail its activation roll for the system and ends up damaging itself in the process. This means that this 90-ton terror can move at the same speed as most inner sphere heavies or mediums for short bursts of speed, making escape far less likely for its prey, or allowing it to outmaneuver its fellow big game battle mechs. A case 2 is also installed to protect it further from ammunition explosions too. After this, it is equipped with an additional 6 double heat sinks, bringing its total cooling to 40 turn on turn, largely due to it being an energy dependent design. So where do we begin when it comes to its offensive systems? Its arm mounted weapons are very much expected. It has twin clan ER large lasers, with one mounted in each arm, allowing the T to reach out and harm mechs at very long ranges as it positions itself to close with targets. It then has four clan ER medium lasers to give the configuration a real punch in the medium range bracket as well, and it pairs superbly with its primary torso mounted weapons. That set of torso mounted pod configuration equipment are the Blood Asp's greatest weapons in this arrangement as it has twin inner sphere plasma rifles, with one in each side torso. These will melt vehicles and infantry, as well as damage mechs and disrupt their own cooling systems. Better yet, it has 50 rounds of ammunition, meaning it can fire 25 turns straight if needed. And once enemy armor panels are opened, it has an SRM-6 to start crit fishing. This battle mech is a fast moving, hard hitting brawler, and a complete nightmare for any other mech to deal with as they find themselves being diminished by plasma. And those are the lucky ones, as if it is a vehicle or infantry that face down this thing's wrath, their end will be embodied only by misery and screaming. The T is an extraordinarily dangerous variant of the Blood Asp. While there are other new Snow Raven designed variations of the Blood Asp, I think the last one being covered here today is fitting given it is an expression of pure firepower. First, it does install two more double heat sinks, bringing its total cooling ability to 32. And it goes on to install a targeting computer to help guide its deadly payload of weapon systems, which are mostly energy in their origin, with one very, very distinct system, which is not. Starting with lasers, it has twin ER large lasers, with one in the right arm and the other in the right torso. To back this up, it has twin heavy medium lasers, with one in the right arm and the other in the left torso. To conclude its lens-based weaponry, it has a pair of medium pulse lasers also in the right arm. These weapons reach out to longer ranges in the case of its large lasers, and the heavy medium lasers by contrast strike in close for big damage, as the medium pulse lasers are utilized to strike with accuracy by contrast. Sometimes, as it has the heat to do it, it can combine these two approaches anyway, as long as it doesn't try to use its large lasers and heavy medium lasers at the same time. But there is another weapon on board, one of the most feared around the world of Battletech as a whole. That is namely that it has a Hyper Assault Gauss Rifle 40 mounted in its left arm and left torso, with 12 rounds of fire. When this cannon opens up, its opposition simply bleeds away. These weapons may deal variable damage, but when they connect, anyone on the receiving end, should they survive, will have felt as though they have just passed through a storm of iron. When combining all of these systems together, the G configuration is a terrifying thing to behold on any battlefield. It might be the most vicious 
of all the snakes. The Blunt Asp is a titanic terror to see when it slithers onto the battlefield, whether it be in service to its true masters, the Star Adders, lurking on the clan homeworlds, staring down its doomed adversaries like Clan Bloodspear, Steel Viper, or the Fire Mandrels, or its brief appearance during the Fedcom Civil War, or, of course, of its arrival in the new era of the Ill Clan era, where seemingly anyone has this most poisonous monster at their disposal. When the Blood Asp appears on the battlefield, the wisest of enemies duck their heads and move for cover. For almost nothing can survive its wrath for very long. Clan Star Adder's creation falling outside of their control is perhaps one of the greatest boons for Clan Snow Raven. But as mentioned prior, it is perhaps more damning to those who will now have to suffer its presence. This has been made even more true when taking into account that many of the pilots of this reptilian-inspired entity are not beholden to the barely limited structure of clan honor, even amongst many of its clan pilots. Cities will be leveled or set ablaze by these monsters in ways that Clan Star Adder never would have envisioned when they first designed this abomination almost a century prior. The Star Adder, the Blood Asp, perhaps is everything Alexander Kerensky wanted to avoid being unleashed upon the Inner Sphere, which inspired him to leave in the first place. It is not hard to imagine this figure, the father of the clans, and the last leader of the Star League Defense Forces, weeping, if the dead weep, upon hearing this creation's birth from his place in the afterlife. The Blood Asp is the final goal to unlock, along with the first Somerset Strikers Lance Box, for the Battletech Mercenaries Kickstarter, which is happening right now upon the initial release of this video. This 90 ton horror will be given on its own as a salvage box to anyone pledging at the company level or higher. It's an incredible looking 3D render so far, which you're likely seeing on screen right now, and I just hope that the Kickstarter has enough life in it to get us to the big $8 million goal in order for most of the backers to get this delightful devil and for it to be released ahead of several years of waiting. There are only a handful of hours left in the Kickstarter, likely around 30 or 40 by the time this video goes live. And I will leave a link in the description below as per usual. I recommend checking it out if you're into the Battletech tabletop game or you want to get into the Battletech tabletop game. It has incredible value. The Kickstarter ends at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on April 20th. It's been a great ride covering vehicles and now mechs for the Kickstarter, but this is the last mech to be covered on the subject, and it is more than fitting. Let's hope this breaks 8 million and makes this monster a reality. You are the stalker, the hunter, the killer. Your prey stands before you. Show them the way of the true warrior. But with that, thank you for joining me here today. If you enjoyed this content, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. There is always more to come, or older videos to check out, and you'll be a big fan of the content, I think. With that, I look forward to hearing from everyone in the comment section below. I hope this video was a great send-off to the final hours of the Mercenary Kickstarter, for those of you who have been watching it.